Admission Welcome to the kids' ward, my little friend. I'll be your named nurse till the bitter end. I need to give my name, my date of birth, my next of kin, my heart, my soul, my body, my everything, my favourite TV programme Scooby-Doo, what I eat, what I drink, when I use the loo. I'm shown my bowl, my locker and my bed. I'm shown the table where my meals are fed. A sign is hung above my name. Nil by mouth is what it's saying. I want to be naked in front of strangers and made to feel my pride's in danger. I want to be made to sit up straight and erect and mute expert words that I detect from three student kings at foot of bed wearing gifts of mask, uniform and rubber gloves instead. I want to feel lovable and huggable, yet made to feel vulnerable and gullible. I want a wheeled cupboard on my right-hand side, with my pants and socks hid well inside, and a ward towel so starched and dry that edges frayed shows blooded dye. I want to feel that I'm just one of a much needy many, and learn that my care's priceless worth won't cost me a penny. I want the thinnest sheets a ward can muster, with angled pillows shaped in angled cluster. Enjoying a night's sleep through cries of nurse, then awoken by torchlit staff that curse. At 6am I want deafening cleaners to shock me awake with deafening steamers. I want to be sat up, washed and dressed before the day shift are at their best. I want to slip on ammonia-stained floors, choking through ammonia-stained pores. Trapped by bed bars to save me each side, with a blanket to cover my naked-filled hide, my bed is wheeled into the tight-fitting lift, whilst the nurse and the porter discuss favourite shifts. A Star Trek door pings as it slides to one side, as cacophonous sounds mask an oily free ride. With trolley pushed views of stained ceiling tiles, hypnotically blurring a corridor mile. I want a sharp scratch that brings a tear, whilst pensionable staff query questionable fear. I want a graft of skin to burn my flesh and feel changed dressings through gauze-like mesh. I want to smell rubbered sweat upon my sad face, counting ten down to one as my vein fluids race, then fade away into scary space, then suddenly wake up in another strange place. I want to be made to feel guilty for making a fuss and be reminded by staff there's only three of us. I want to feel numb from waist to feet and be promised tomorrow's when you can eat. Euphoria can go and pain can take over, as belittling cold hands say, what a brave soldier. I want to be offered 1950s books from bored volunteers with 1950s looks. I want to get a long-distance message from Mum an hour and a half after her message was rung. I want to watch the black and white TV, especially those programmes where colour is key, positioned so far away that no one can see or hear unless those dated headphones work from the rear. Next day I'll be pressurised to walk the ward. When stitch and wound feels like dug sword. Having laid for weeks in my incarcerated bed, I'll be expected to move with a cat-like tread. I want an x-ray that proves absolute zero. Then wait two hours for my porter hero to return me to kids ward eight, where my aging bananas and custard await. 
I'm told that I'm cured as I glance down the ward at the frightened new faces who say not a word. They're pale and they're needy. They're scared and they're weedy. I want to keep their fears at bay. So, with a flick of my tongue, I wish them away and say, Don't worry, mate. You'll be okay. But my impatient, impatient patience appears. I'm packed. I'm ready. Can I just go? That's when those words, patience, dread, are bestowed. We're just waiting for your paperwork, you know. Finally, I'm discharged. With fake smile on my face, I'll lie to staff for all their empathic grace. Thank you all for your care and pity. Then, turning my back, I'll return to dignity.